No, I probably won't see you guys tomorrow, but happy Thanksgiving to you guys. I hope everyone uh, has a great opportunity to celebrate with your family, and uh, we all take some time to be grateful and give our blessings to, to the man above. Fire away. Eric, uh, what do you guys have to do offensively to maybe get back to the kind of team you were earlier in the season? Uh, one thing we got to do, we got we to gotta stop the self-inflicted wounds. We've been killing ourselves with penalties. We're, we're doing a good job of executing, but we'll go down, have a good drive, then we stop ourselves. Then we put ourselves in a situation where it's tough to overcome. And, and give credit to the guys playing across from us as well, because they're playing good defense. But at the end of the day, we got to play against the opponent and stop playing against ourselves. Let's clean up the little things. Let's be fundamentally sound. Let's focus, you know. Then we'll give ourselves a better opportunity to go out and be who we know we can uh, be. Other than talking about those things in meetings and yes, sir. talking about them on the practice field, how do you how do you do that? What 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 can you guys do other than those things? Well, first of all, as a, you know, these guys we do a great job of presenting them film of their mistakes. On top of that, we spend a lot of time talking about it and working on it in our individual periods, and also making sure that the individual period is carrying over to the actual team period. And that's the thing that we're harping on. And we want our guys to be critical of self. And more importantly, we want them making the most of every play and every opportunity that they have out there on the field. Because as we cut, go through the season, we cut down on reps. So those reps become more and more important. So it's important that we maximize the opportunities that we're being given. Coach, last season, Sammy Watkins said that having all of the offensive weapons that the Chiefs have, plus when they're all healthy, takes a lot of pressure off of a receiver or you know an offensive piece like Watkins. How have you seen the injuries really piling up? How, what kind of mental impact has that had maybe on players like Sammy who then kind of have this extra responsibility? You know what? I know players have a tendency to think about that. As a coach, we don't think about it because our job is to make sure the next man is ready. And at the end of the day, you guys have heard me say this, and I'll say it again. We coach our starters to be starters and not to get their jobs taken. We coach our backups to go out there and prepare as a starter and to take their job. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we have the next available player ready. Injuries happen. It's unfortunate, but they happen. That's a part of the league. I think you find out who the great coaching staffs are when you can put a guy in and have him go out and play to a maximum level that you're expecting him to play. Speaking of that, we know that Damian won't start the, the week. Uh, we've seen LaShawn a little bit of Darryl. What is Darwin? What are you waiting for Darwin? What does he have to do to kind of maybe get a, get a shot here and, and get up there? Well, he'll be given an opportunity this weekend. And at the end of the day, it's about maximizing that opportunity. And it's not just as a runner. Okay. One thing I have a conversation with all these guys when they walk into this building. Okay. We're hiring all applicants. So you're applying for every job there is available. So we, he has to make sure that he's maximizing the opportunity on special teams because we know what he can do as a runner. He's a hell of a football player. Okay. But at the end of the day, this is a team game. So he has to understand his role and appreciate the value that he can bring. And I think once he gains an appreciation of that, the rest will take care of itself. Is there anything you feel like you can improve upon in the run game? Because I know it hasn't been, except for the one game against Minnesota where uh, Damian went off. There hasn't been really a big standout performance. Is there anything you're trying to do from schematics to play? Well, and, and I'll say this, and I know this sounds like coaching talk, but we got to execute a little better. At the end of the day, I know offensive linemen get paid to block, but runners get paid to run. All right? It's, the, it's about the attitude and the determined mindset. We got to make sure that we're clicking on all phases. As a former running back coach, it's important that the backs are in sync and in rhythm with the offensive line. And then on top of that, it's important that the offensive line has the proper communication and in sync and in rhythm with that back. Right now, for whatever reason, our synergy has been off. But everything still can be corrected. And we know what we're facing. Now it's just about applying it and doing it and getting the job done. Eric, uh, Sammy Watkins had that big game down in Jacksonville. Looked like he was headed to a big season. Hasn't been as productive since. What, what's going on with him, and how do you kind of get him back to maybe closer to that player he was? In the I, and I, I'll say this, and it's not to negate anything, and I know in this league everybody wants to look at numbers, and I understand that and I get that. Sammy has been doing a hell of a job. Sammy is a great team player. He's very professional. Now, the numbers may not, quote-unquote, show the, uh, his, his, his worth 
like it did in that particular game. Okay, but at the end of the day, Sammy's one of our most valuable players because he goes out there, he works his tails off, but also, too, he's opening up routes for other players, and that's a part of it. This is a team game. Can you give us some examples of maybe where, under the radar, he's done something like what you're talking about? Well, here's, here's the unique thing that I love about him. First and foremost, just the way these guys communicate. You know, they're looking at coverages, and just like in our walkthrough period. They're looking, they're evaluating coverages and what's taking place. And you hear these guys as they're walking back to the huddle, hey, if this happens, you know, so-and-so does this, this is what we need to do, and this is how you need to react. Those things are very, very valuable. And I, and, and I hate to sound like a broken record. When you have great chemistry, great things are, are going to come. And so as long as these guys are still clicking, that's all that matters. The rest will take care of itself. In the last couple of games, you know, against the Titans, against the Chargers, you had a chance late to, to put the ball away, keep keep the ball, put the game away. And in the past, you know, especially last season, you did that pretty consistently. Has it been kind of a surprise to you that you you struggled in those late game situations of kind of controlling the ball? Well, you you always want success. We have to be better. We got to execute. Not going to take anything away from the guys across from us. They're playing some good ball, and and obviously teams are doing a great job of are preparing for us, but when it's all said and done with, we got to control the things that we can control. When those opportunities come up, it's time for us to have the killer instinct and get it done. That's what this is about. We haven't gotten it done, and that's our fault as a coaching staff. Last one, Alex. Coach, your nephew, Jamal, was uh, in town <laughs> playing the Hall of Fame Classic. Could you go out and watch him? No, I didn't. Uh, we've been in constant communication, and uh, I actually had an opportunity to go watch him when they played in the tournament uh, this past year, but... Uh, He's a heck of a kid. He was actually a hell of a football player, too. I'm not yeah. going <laughs> to. He said uh, yeah. it was a little cooler in the basketball facility. Yeah. He's not having to go play outside in Texas. But uh, he, one thing you got to understand, my sister-in-law, she's a tough cookie now. So <laughs> she made that decision. He's going to play basketball. I said, all right, no problem. I'm, I'm going to back off, and I'm going to be his biggest fan. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you.